This is the grade eight math practice test for T and ready. We are in subpart three. This is question 23 currently. Uh, which sets of ordered pairs represent a function? And select all that apply. Now the thing about a function is you want your inputs, which generally speaking are your x values, to only have one function, uh, one mapping y value. So when we draw this, for instance, everything's fine it passes what we call the vertical line test. It means that none of the x's have more than one y value. But when you have something like this, that's a mess. Here and here. I tend to think of functions as soda machines. Lie to yourself and pretend this looks decent. I know it doesn't. So say we have button 1, button 2, button 3, and button 4. In order for a soda machine to function, it has to be consistent. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for when you press the button, it gives you what it says it's going to give you. If you press the button and it gives you different things each time, that is not a functional machine. You want a functional machine. So in terms of this, the X's are the buttons and the Y's are the sodas that you get. The X's, in order for it to be a function, need to be different for the entire relation. So um, these sets, the x's need to be different. The y's can be whatever. That's totally 100% OK for them to be the same. In fact, if I'm leaning on the soda machine um, symbolism here, there are some machines like at theme parks that I used to go to, Six Flags, for instance, they would have machines that just gave you Dr. Pepper. And that's what they said they were going to do, so it made sense. You'd press button one, and they'd give you Dr. Pepper. Button two, they'd give you Dr. Pepper. Button three, Dr. Pepper. And button four, Dr. Pepper. So Ys can be the same all the way through, and you could still it's still functional. It just has to be consistent. When I press button one, it only gives me one thing, no matter what that thing is. So which set of order pairs represent a function? You know how they use all this bold here? They use extra ink to tell you there's probably more than one correct answer. The default, of course, is that there's one of them. But if it says select all that apply, that is them trying their best. This is one step below all caps screaming on the Internet about how you should probably look for more than one answer. So let's look. In a 1, 1, 1, uh-oh, my X's are not different. So if I press button 1, let's say, let's just make up some things. So 1 is Pepsi, 2 is Diet, Pepsi, 3 is, let's see, Air Mist, is that what they're doing now? And 4 is, it's called Dr. Pepper, who cares? Dr. P. Um, I press this one button here, and the first time I press it, it gives me Pepsi. The second time I press it, it gives me, see? Diet, and then third time I press it, it gives me Sierra Mist. This thing is broken. This is a non-functioning machine. For B, I press button one and I get Pepsi. I press button two and I get Diet. I press button three and I get Sierra Mist, and I press number four and I get Dr Pepper. That is a totally functional machine. It's also extremely extremely rational. Each thing has its own. Um, machine C or the relation C. If I press 1, I get Pepsi. That's fine. I press button 2, I also get Pepsi. That's okay, as long as I'm consistently getting it. I press button 3, Pepsi. Press button 4, Pepsi. This is a totally functional machine. Now, it's only going to give me Pepsi, but as long as I press the button and it gives me the same thing every time, it functions. I may not like it, but it is functional, and that's all that's required. So for D, I press button 1 and I get Dr. Pepper. I press button 2 and I get... Dr. Pepper, that's okay. I press button one again, though, and I get Sierra Mist. See, that's where the problem is. I press this button, and it doesn't always give me one thing. Sometimes it gives me Dr. Pepper. Sometimes it gives me Sierra Mist. It means there's some problem, and it's not functional anymore. What you're really looking for is just consistency, that it does what it says it's going to do over and over and over again. And the last one, I press button one, and I get Dr. Pepper. It's fine. I press button two, and I get Diet. Great. I press button three and I get Pepsi. Perfect. And I press button four and I get Dr. Pepper. There are no times where I press any of the buttons twice and get different things. Each time I press a button, I get something um, 
just one thing, and that's fine. It doesn't even matter that they're the same or different that I get out of them. It's just that it's consistent. I didn't hit the same button twice and get two different things. That would be a problem. So this is functional machine. It's very consistent, and that's question number 23. So remember, what you're looking for is, do does your input have only one output? You don't want to fail the vertical line test. For instance, this would say, so say this is x of 2. Well, they have one up here at, say, 5, and one down here at negative 3. That's the whole, you press the button, you get Pepsi, you press the button, you get Dr. Pepper. That's not what you want. You want consistency, and you want this whole system to be functional. So each input only has one output, no matter what that output happens to be.